So here it is, the full interview with Anna Parker Naples of the Inspiring Mummy Club. Okay, so here we go. Today I am fangirling slightly. I am a little obsessed with this lady's amazing podcast. Uh, she runs the Inspiring Mummy Club. This is Anna Parker Naples. So I'm just really excited to have you here. <laughs> we have had a little chat beforehand, so I've kind of got a little bit of my fangirling out of my system and some of the nervous energy of today um but it's amazing to have you here I've got a little script up so I don't go too off kilter because we know I can do that a lot um so, so I'll hand it over to you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about who you are work-wise and as a mummy so my name is Anna Parker Naples and I'm founder of the award-winning, multi-award winning Inspiring Mummy Club. We launched a year and a quarter ago and I've had an absolute whirlwind of a journey. And last year I won an award where the other winners on the night were Rio Ferdinand, Adele, Holly Willoughby and Penny Lancaster, which was just kind of mind blowing in my first year of business. Okay. And basically Inspiring Mummy Club is all about helping mums who want a bit more out of their life. So whether that's you feel you're not connecting with the right kind of people, whether you find yourself being brought down by other people's negativity. Maybe you have some goals and ambitions or creative dreams that are really unfulfilled and you don't know how to go about getting those off the ground. Or maybe you've already started to do something but you want to be supported by other people on that journey and other material and resources that can help with your confidence. Um, and in the club it's a monthly membership and we provide hypnosis which is all about confidence visualizations again another technique for the subconscious mind meditation for helping you deal with stress and a full eight week mindfulness course as part of the package um, because I kind of see mindfulness is one a great tool for stress reduction but also once you go from that place of utter overwhelm once you've got that under control and you're managing it I feel like mindfulness is then it can be a springboard for what else you want to achieve in your life because you can start to see the things that aren't making you unhappy and start to notice the things that do make you happy um, so yeah I'm mad about just helping people have real concrete tools that they can incorporate mindfulness and mindset into their everyday life. It's all very well that we hear all about mindset, but how do you actually make that part of your daily routine? And then we launched the Inspiring Mummy Club podcast earlier this year as well. And we now have a huge following. Um, again, just one of those things that's grown, grown really naturally. Um, and that tends to be, not exclusively, but it tends to be interviews with mums who are out there I would say making life happen. So they are mums, they have struggles, they have challenges, but they're deciding actually, this is my time too, and I'm gonna make it count. So often, which is I think the thing that Jessica with Super Mum Society kind of finds as well. So often I find that people decide because they're a mum, they can't do anything and that there's no room for them. And for a long, long time, I used to feel that too, until some quite, very strong bizarre circumstances happened to me and I had to make some major changes and that's kind of what led to me starting Inspiring Mummy Club and having a creative career and creative ambitions and goals that I am now smashing so that's that's kind of me in a nutshell <laughs> amazing it the podcast has been I want to say game changing I love that phrase sorry game changing for me uh, and to have that kind of voice in my ear, I have a walk I, I do every day, with, uh, every day, that'd be nice, every week with the kid and I listen to your podcast and I'm, just, I'm a different person by the end of that walk. I'm a better person, I'm a happier person. It particularly has a good effect if I'm in a particularly bad mood uh, to lift me out of it. So I, I just really think you're making such a difference. So, so I was so honoured when you were like, yes, yes, I can do yeah. it. I, I can it's really guys. nice. Because when you when you do a podcast, you don't always hear from the listeners. We have thousands of people who listen every week, but people don't necessarily get in touch. And I, 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 as I talk about a lot in the podcast, I like to think it might just be that nugget, that little kernel that might make someone go, actually, I could do something different today. Maybe I have a business idea. Maybe I could get out, you know, my drawing equipment that I used to use. Maybe there's something I can do to look after myself that isn't just having a nice bubble bath but yeah. it's something that's actually going to help you on, on a much deeper level. Um, and as a, as a life coach and an NLP practitioner, I felt quite frustrated with how 
how limited I was in being able to help people one on one because mm. there are so many tools that I've learned for myself in terms of self development since I've become a mum that I want to be able to spread that message wider. Um, and I'd, I'd just like Jessica just to kind of give people a little bit of an overview about what led to me creating Inspiring Mummy Club in the first place. So my children now are 13, 10 and 8. So I'm by no means a new mummy. Um, and that's one of the key things with Inspiring Mummy Club. I don't just aim it at people in those first couple of years of being a mum, being a mummy, because in my book, a good mum is a mummy for her life, right? You are gonna have, you, you are a mummy all, all forever. And I wanted to be able to help people who are not just in those early years, although we have members who are in that um, bracket too, but also when your children go to school, when maybe they go from primary to secondary, maybe they become teenagers and they don't need you so much or they need you in a different way, or, or even when they're starting to leave home. We have members all the way through who are struggling with their identity and perhaps there's been, you know, maybe their marriage isn't happy but they don't know what to do about it or maybe, you know, they they've forgotten that they used to like writing and it turns out they have a manuscript in their drawer at home and we've had people go on and have their books published because they've used our materials to build confidence we've had people save their marriages leave their marriages we've had people win awards start new careers leave leave jobs that they hate um, and all those things because they started to look at well, what, is, what is it for me? What have I been doing that hasn't been for me? And why haven't I fitted my own needs into my everyday life? Why have I put getting the house tidy above everything for me? And how can I reclaim that back? What are the shifts as the family's kind of changing as well? How can I make sure that I'm centre stage and not kind of in the background? Um, and the reason that I did this, well, the reason I decided to create Inspiring Mummy Club was because eight years ago in my third pregnancy, I suffered really badly with SPD, simplest pubis dysfunction. I think it's often now known as PGP, pelvic girdle pain. And I had it so badly that I was told I would never walk again. And as you can imagine, uh, that was very difficult. At this point, I had a four and a half year old. I had a 20 month old and a newborn on the way. And yeah, life was really, really tough. And I knew I had, if I was going to be disabled for the rest of my life that I had to come one come to terms with it two make peace with it and three be able to still live and have a proper life and feel like me and I ended up going to see a hypnotherapist kind of thinking well maybe it'll help me sleep better or manage things better but he didn't put me in trance that day he talked to me which I didn't realize but that was NLP which um, neuro-linguistic programming and he listened to all my language and he basically threw it back at me. And I was saying so many things about how for a long time I'd felt stuck as a mum. For a long time I had felt I had to give up being creative. I was an actor before I had children. That I had to, um, everyone else's needs had to come first. That I couldn't even really spend money on myself, for myself. Yet my children would have everything. They'd go to every club going but spending things, even like investing in a nice quality bra, I would feel yeah. like I don't really deserve that. There was those feelings of not yeah. deserving. And I'd, I'd given up my acting career at basically the moment I found out I was pregnant with my first child. And I really struggled with that. And I, I gave it up because I felt I couldn't be a good mum and a good actor. And that was tapping into all sorts of cultural expectations. Also, you know, expectations from my family from my background my upbringing and they're not true and in this one conversation he threw back so many things that I was saying about how unhappy I was how stuck I was the, how limited I was and also how much pain I was always in and he kind of said is it true you're always in pain what were you thinking when you were watching EastEnders or, or whatever I'm like, oh, okay. so what, how were you feeling before I, before I asked you how you were well, the truth was I wasn't thinking about my pain. It wasn't actually true. I was always in pain. And once he threw that up to me and he gave me other options to how to think about my life and to not think that I'm stuck anymore. What if I am actually free? What if I am actually able? I just haven't been looking at those options because I've been on this one very narrow path. Some amazing things happened. Not only did I go home and change my language to my husband, I stop telling him how bad I felt, stop telling him how much pain I was in. I asked my parents to stop asking me how how pain how much pain I was in, how terrible I must be feeling. And I just would say I'm having a healing day. 
Mm. And that in itself created so much space because if I'm not thinking about how bad things are, how unfair it is, how limited I am as a parent, how my life isn't how I want it to be, how it's so unfair that I can't be the actor I wanted to be and I should have been and all of those things, well, there was just this space. And within three weeks, I was back on my feet. I was using the Zimmer frame, but I was not using the wheelchair anymore. Within six weeks, I was back doing the school run. And that's kind of incredible, it's right? Absolutely. So one, the doctors weren't right. Two, <laughs> you often tell yourself things and you believe those things, but what if they're wrong? And so once I was back on my feet, I was kind of like, well, this, this is slightly crazy. Did I make it all up? And I knew I hadn't. And, you know, anatomically, I had had difficulties. But if that wasn't true, and that felt like it was going to be for life, what else isn't true? So I started looking at my idea of being a good mum and a performer. And I went on this kind of slightly bonkers career where if I was going to stay in a wheelchair at this point, I was going to investigate being a voice actor, a voiceover artist from home. I knew nothing really about it but decided I can do, I can see that that could work. If I never recover and I can't be on stage, then I could work from home and recording. And I ended up within a few weeks of working for some of the top brands in the world, such as Coca-Cola and all sorts of other people. It's not like it happened overnight. I put a lot of effort into it, but I built this career whilst I had my newborn, whilst I was still recovering and yeah, a few years later, I'd, I'd fully recovered. I had my three children. I'd proven to myself that if I thought about something and decided it, I could make it happen. And I basically decided that I was going to become one of one of the UK's leading voice actors. I just decided because why not? Because why, you know, why shouldn't I when I know that I'm talented and able and I'm confident working with my voice? And so I've, I then went on to have this kind of, I specialised in um, video games and also in audiobooks. And in America, it's huge. And so I work predominantly for American publishing companies for their audiobooks, which then go on the American Audible site. Some are in the UK, but most of them are only available in the States. And I have been a Hollywood finalist seven times now, <laughs> walking the red carpets in LA. <laughs> The first time I was in LA on the red carpet, it was actually five years almost to the day that I was told I'd never walk again, mm. which was kind of incredible because I'd fully recovered. I'd got the creative career that I'd always dreamed that I would have. And I was still being the kind of mum I've got to fly in my, in my room. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was also doing the school run every day. So instead of going back to that conversation with, with the NLP and coach and hypnotherapist that day, what he got me to do was stop kind of going, what I can't do, what I can't do, what I can't, all the things that aren't open to me. Stop looking at that. What are all the things you don't see? What am I not looking at? What else is out there? And the more I focused on, on changing the way I perceived the world, the more my life changed. Physically, mentally, emotionally, all those self-help books that I have read for years and years and years, I'm suddenly putting everything into practice. And I had I had this kind of episode the last time I was in Hollywood, which was about 18 months ago. I knew by this point I was coaching all around the world via Skype and for fun, <laughs> for my own fun, really, I qualified as a master NLP practitioner and a master hypnotherapist. And I knew that last time I was in Hollywood that I, I, I had kind of I'd done everything I wanted to do within that industry and that there was so much more to give. And I literally flew home from that event and I landed, I still had like eyelash glue on my face from the awards evening because it, would, it wouldn't come off. And we went straight from the airport to pick up people, from my kids from school. And I was really, really struck by that kind of juxtaposition between people who are out there absolutely making things happen and living awesome creative lives. Mm. And then being in the playground where lots, many, many lovely people, but many of them very, very flat believing they can't, believing they have to settle, believing they don't deserve. And I would feel myself mirroring that. So I would, the creative parts of me, I would kind of squash a little bit, right? And um, I came to realize that that was something I'd done a lot as I'd become a mum. So we were talking off air, Jessica and I, about NCT groups, and I, I had a wonderful NCT group but they weren't people that I connected with necessarily on a creative level. Wonderful friends while our children were tiny, but they weren't necessarily 
on the same level. And I had deliberately walked away from all my creative people um, that I'd had in my life and that I really identified with that I'd had in my life before I had children. And I, I had kind of this kind of brainwave. Well, hold on, I, I have all these skills. I'm a leading voice at art, over artist in the world. I'm a qualified master hypnotherapist. I'm a qualified mindfulness teacher by this point and meditation teacher. What if I could coach mums on a wider scale to look after themselves and basically enjoy the same journey that I'm on and um, yes I'm the expert in that I have all the qualifications but I'm on this journey too every day for me is a decision constantly to look after myself so I still have those stressy moments with the children but I have more tools to tap into now um, and that's, that's kind of in a nutshell why Inspiring Mummy Club started and, and how it's grown um, which has been very organically um, and yeah, that's that's kind of it. That's a lot of information all amazing. in one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an amazing journey. I'm that's why I'm rarely quiet, but you kind of stunned me into silence because it's it is an incredible journey you've been on, and I just see like this amazing journey ahead of you as well. And there's so many like you were saying about the how can you do this thing these things um i'm very much a stop saying you can't do it and look at how you can do it and like you were saying about you read a lot of the self-help books and then actually having to put them into practice because i do hear that a lot and it was a voice that i used to say to myself oh it won't work for me it won't work for me but had i tried it no and actually tried it and once i put it into practice i'm sort of hitting myself that i didn't do it years ago when i sort of first heard it mentioned um, or when someone first recommended the book to me. Um, I mean, one of them, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, was mentioned to me, I think in sixth form by a very good friend of mine who is still a very good friend. He's actually one of my daughter's godfathers. And it wasn't until my, my now partner um, mentioned it and does some work with the, the writer of that book. And I was like, well, I, I better read it then. If, if you're thinking it's good, it must be good and read it. Um, and this friend of mine went, I mentioned that to you years ago. But sometimes you're not ready to hear a message. Sometimes you're not, not in that place. And you're, um, sometimes you're not ready, you're not in a place to take action. And that's one of the things that I enjoy with Inspiring Mummy Club is that everything is broken down into monthly content so you can work through it at a pace. I, I'm a voracious reader of self-help books that so often wouldn't put them into practice until I was in a place of desperation. And yeah. I wanted to be able to create something where you weren't overwhelmed, where you just did a little bit every month mm -hmm. or even every week, just a few minutes here and there. And all of our material is just super short because you know, I am busy. I'm a busy mum myself. Justifying taking hours and hours and hours out for myself can be a challenge, yeah. but taking a few minutes every day is realistic. And you like um, the some version of things, the like the abbreviated short course. Who's the short course? The yeah, mums yeah. the in the room. Yeah, having said that, one of the things in our mindfulness course, the eight week mindfulness course, which is online, the reason I created that was because I myself struggled to justify going on an eight week course where I was going to have to, just for three hours a week, have to commit to eight hours without the children, have to pay a few hundred pounds to be there. And where was that money going to come from? And how was I going to get the childcare? And that was stressing me out before I even went to this mindfulness course. And also lots of people who struggle with anxiety or overwhelm. Well, the idea of being with eight other people, that can be a real a real way to stop them going in the first place yeah. so i created this eight week mindfulness course and one of the kind of cornerstones of that is that you have you at least for the first two weeks have a 30 or 45 minute m meditation practice every day and as a mum i was kind of like how on earth can you do that and yet the interesting thing is when you make that your priority even just for a short period the amount of changes that then happen for you physically emotionally and mentally and the things that you're rushing and stressing towards, you go out with a completely different energy. Actually, bizarrely, you end up with more time because you yeah. do things. Oh, we've gone fuzzy. We're we gonna get you back. I've lost you, your video's frozen. I don't know if you can hear me still. I'm going to try stop video and start video and see if that... 
makes a difference. Oh, I've lost you. Hello. I'm back. I'm back. Hello. <laughs> Let me. I'm not sure what to... happened there. Uh, I'm not. I don't think it cut off mid sentence, which is quite good. So I'll be able to sort of edit them two together. Let me just close down. I sent you the link on email again. I don't know if it needed a new link, but I thought, well, it's something okay. to do for it. And um, here we go. Right. Turn off my notifications. Go. Uh, and we're still recording. Cool. Um, so yes, I was I was mid flow when we think we were cut off. So I'm not <laughs> quite sure where I was, but I was basically saying that an inspiring mummy club we created a, 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 an online mindfulness course. It's the only time we have longer content because that 35 or 40 minute meditation practice can completely be a game changer. Not that you have to do it forever, but realizing that the things you're stressing and worrying about actually aren't that important can change things radically you know I liked what you were saying as well about you invest that certain amount of time and it it saves time because last month we did a whole month on time saving um, and that was one of my my big things we had a video about preparation and the statistic is going to disappear out of my ear as I need it it's it's approximately if you spend 10 to 12 minutes a day on planning you save two hours a day and two hours a day is a lot of time that would be very, very useful. Um, I am slightly psychotically obsessed with anything, time management, time saving and all that shiz was. Um, so I can get a little bit passionate when people say I don't have time and I'm like, right, give me your planner. How are you doing your days? How do you structure? And they're like, I don't have a planner. So have you time blocking? No, I don't time block. And I was like, well, there's the first problem. <laughs> What are you trying to fit into your day? Well, this, this, and this. And well, do you want to do all those things? No, I don't. I was like, well, let's get rid of the things you don't want to do. And um, so I, I love the with any kind of concept of you invest a little bit and you get such good return. And um, because to be honest, we're not getting that in our savings accounts these days with the economy as it is. But um, investing in ourselves can reap so many rewards. And well, it's it's we simple put things. It first. Put it first. Your simple things, Jessica, like, you know, you're feeling really stressed. Maybe you've got to go and pick up the kids from preschool or school or whatever. It depends what age they are. If you actually just take three minutes to breathe and pull yourself together, right, and literally just let all that stuff go, then, you know, the other, you're going to be kinder with the kids. You're going to be nicer to the children. You're going to feel a little bit less overwhelmed. And therefore, the conversations then ensue with your children if they are playing off or they've had a bad day themselves, you're going to respond in a different way. So you then don't have, you know, the potential for a complete family breakdown and arguments or whatever else that we sometimes get in the car because you've looked after yourself first. So you're responding in a better way. So that, and it's, you know, that's just a simple way to create more time just by taking three minutes for yourself because you then haven't got that aftermath to deal with. Um, we we and, serve yeah, people better from a full cup, don't we? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's one of with our hypnosis tracks. It's you know you t- take twenty minutes for yourself once or twice a week, or when you're going to bed. It can completely change how you feel about yourself and about the things you think you can achieve 
which during waking hours are going to transform what you spend your time doing and what you're thinking about and what you're focusing on. Um, and that's, you know, I mean, I love all this stuff. I'm passionate about this stuff and I have to work at it too. And I yeah. think that's one of the things, everything that I do and everything I talk about, I am not the polished version. I am on a journey because this stuff is never done, right? You don't yeah. do a mindset course and then that's it. You have to keep making sure you put those tools into play. Definitely. I think that kind of leads quite nicely into our sort of the first area that we're going to talk about. I am going to look at my little line up here um, so I know what's going on. Um, is this, this, this concept of not good enough because I think that's where quite a lot of not willing to invest this time because we're kind of like well we're not we're not worth this this sort of investment of time um we we're not we're never going to be any better or we're just kind of sort of slumming our way through things and I just sort of wanted to talk a little bit about where this where this idea has come from we touched on when we were talking about this before about the this kind of media sort of sensation of you're just a mum so just let things slide but actually that doesn't that doesn't work for everyone and that might be why you're not feeling good enough is it's sort of a I don't feel like I'm explaining myself particularly well here well I think it's that balance between letting things go and not sweating the small stuff and actually doing yeah. things and actually getting through the things that actually give you a level of self-respect so we were talking about you know you know if you if you were to live in an untidy home that's fine if it doesn't bother you but if actually there's a part of you that feels that actually I'm not good enough because I don't look after my house at all and I'm sick of living in 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 a slovenly way then that doesn't actually fit you and that's actually going to keep you feeling quite stuck now on the other hand if it really does not bother you that that's that's how your home is um then it doesn't matter and let it go I think there's we kind of i kind of feel with a lot of the mummy blogging that's happening at the moment some of them are doing an absolutely amazing job but there is that increasing media portrayal that mums are all living for the next glass of wine and absolutely um completely winging it and um i think that that isn't the only way you can be i think for me personally i know that i'm a much better mum when i'm looking after myself and that's again i don't mean that as in i'm having a nice bubble bath i mean as in looking after my mental and emotional welfare um yes. i'm looking after the kind of language that i use i'm looking after the kind of materials that i listen to or that i read that i'm surrounded by people who uplift me and motivate me um rather than you know if i'm just spending the evening evening after evening just watching tv or reading trashy books or whatever it's fine to do any of those things as a part of your relaxation but if that's the only stimulus you're getting then where are you heading and um i yeah. think i think for me it's not and that's the thing with inspiring mummy club i'm not all about supporting mums who want businesses or who want jobs or who want to be high flyers I want people who are mums to just realise it's okay to be where you are right now and enjoy it, but also think about what it is that, that makes you you. And um, I think so often, we talk about the imposter syndrome, so often as mums we feel like we're not good enough, we don't know what we're doing, um, and and how should we parent, that maybe everyone else has got it right and we're wrong. And what I really love about the cornerstone of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is that there is no concept of right or wrong. That's just a model that you've been fed. And there are millions of other models of the world that you can look at. So if there's no right or wrong, then you can't get it wrong anyway. But looking yeah. after yourself, for me, fundamental is fundamental to being the kind of good parent in my, my model of the world. I'm, if I'm looking after myself, my kids are going to get a better parent and I'm going to be happier. I was finding myself, so my, my daughter's only, I say only 14 and a half months old, feels like I've had her for a million years and I feel like I was always meant to be her mum, so it's kind of like she's always been a part of me, but now she's this nearly walking ball of craziness and it was just that I have found that I was doing things very differently to a lot of the mums that I met in the early months. I have now connected with some mums that are more on my wavelength. I found one mum in particular that we are we are very sort of similar. We still parent completely differently, but we are much more on a similar wavelength. I'm not questioning everything I'm doing as a mum, which which is crazy because 
apologies, but I'm one of those mums whose kids leaked. But I did routine and structure with her and I worked really hard at that. And my best friend is always telling me like, you need to stop saying you've got an easy kid because yes, yeah, she might, maybe she might be easy, but you also put the effort in and the groundwork in to be the kind of mum you want to be. And it's worked, it's worked well for you. But even when my, my child was sleeping, I was feeling like, oh, am I not good enough because I'm not giving her eight cuddles through the night because she keeps waking up and that's crazy. Like I had the, the dream. So we, all have, we all have the negative self-talk all the time and it's how much, how much weight you put on that and it's whether you're going to let that overpower you or not. Because well, we I, have- I chose to step away from some of those sort of mums that, that I was meeting that were making me feel like even when I was, and my partner again was very good at saying he was spotting me doing it and saying, you're a great mom. This has worked out really well. Uh, she's such a happy kid because of what you're doing. And we don't all have partners that are telling us that, um, which is why I like telling other mums that and saying you need to realise quite how super you are. Um, I do get people saying the word super mum, it doesn't resonate with me. And then I get talking to them and they realise, oh, well, actually I am pretty super. But they haven't got, like I've got two people in my life telling me I'm doing well. And some people haven't got that. And you need to be that voice for yourself and be like, yes, I am doing well. I might not be doing it the same as everyone else, but I'm doing it well. I'm doing it my way. And my kid is healthy and happy. What? Yeah. We need to stop judging ourselves. I think we are our worst judges. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think that leads quite nicely into our next one. I'm going to get my exact wording up so I say this night because I've still got baby brain. Everyone says baby brain goes at 12 months. I feel like they're lying. Um, <laughs> big lying. Um, so it's the, the comparison issue. I like that, that phrase, the comparison issue. of We're constantly comparing ourselves to other mums who don't, then they're, they're not parenting the same way they've got different values different priorities and yet we're still comparing ourselves against them i think um social media really doesn't help with that because people are presenting a very polished view you know the pictures we put up don't tend to be when we've just shouted at the children uh when we've failed to get the bed linen changed because there's been other things maybe the dog's been sick maybe someone else has been poorly there's been a million things to do that day we don't post that (laughs) we we post all the glamorous side of parenting we post when we cook them you know the perfect meal as opposed to fish and uh, you know fish and chips or beans on toast or or whatever you've done because you've not had much time that day we don't share those things openly and so because we don't share them ourselves we don't get that shown back to us either um Mm. i think you've just got to walk your own path and you know don't worry about what everyone else is doing because every child is different every parent is different you don't have an instruction manual we are making it up obviously as we go along and learning i mean i'm constantly learning my my eldest is now you know going into the teenage years and we have other parenting issues this stuff as a parent doesn't stop once they go to School, it continues and it evolves and I think that that will if I'm parenting the way I hope to be parenting I will still be parenting my children when they've left home you know yeah. I will still be that first port of call or one of the ports of call for them right up until you know the end of time for us and um, I think that's the thing you, you know you're creating relationship parenting really is creating relationships with your children yes yeah. you're disciplining yes you're modeling for them but really it's about what's going on at home and uh, how, whether that feels good or not, whether you're all in a good place. And it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. Yeah. No, I think that's, uh, I, don't, I can't think of another aspect of life where we compare ourselves so much as we do as, as mums. What is it about becoming mums that warps our personality so because much? Because I, I think it's part of that loss of identity. Yeah because we were people my children just the other day we were walking along and they kind of guess it's really weird to think that you actually were alive before we were you know they can't get their heads around the fact that at one point i didn't know daddy and that you know i may have had other boyfriends or i traveled parts of the world and i'd had other careers and other jobs and experiences that didn't include them we lose so much of ourselves when we have babies and that's because initially we're very tired And Mm. then, you know, there is all this concern that we're not doing it right. And for me, I wanted to be the best mum I could be when they were tiny. Not that that's stopped now, but it's a different different thing. 
And I know I completely subjugated myself, my desires, my passions, my interests, my creativity for a very long time. And that ultimately led to me being very unhappy. And I, although I had physical problems with SPD, actually it was that unhappiness and that sense of feeling stuck that I think allowed me to become that unwell in the first place. I think there's all sorts of stuff that goes on in our subconscious mind that comes out physically. And unfortunately mine was very, very dramatic but equally the plus side to that is every difficult thing we go through we learn we grow and there's for me always a silver lining to the cloud and that's definitely the journey that I've been on and so if if you're out there listening anyone or watching and things aren't in your life the way you want them to be start looking at what tiny changes you can start to make what can you do to look after yourself what can you do that makes you tick so even if that is just sitting down for a few minutes and working out what comes next in your day planning like jessica says or or just knowing that there's there's more out there that there are other mums who are out there doing interesting things and that that's okay too can i pause you there a second can you hear my kids screaming in the background or is it not coming through no i do have to we are paused i do have to round up quite quickly jessica yeah yeah i've just realized that well she's i can hear that she's being put to bed that's why she's screaming um uh, no one cares. Um, you know, people don't mind. <laughs> people get it. Um, I feel like the last question I was going to do doesn't fit now with the rest of the content. Like it could do with its whole own separate video. So I'm going to cut that one out, I think. Um, okay. Which is quite good with the whole wrapping up quite quickly yeah. about the, the whole imposter thing. Um, I think we've covered that anyway. Yeah, it's... It, it's the, the, the journey I wanted to take that bit on doesn't fit with how we've been going. I think we've got like enough in this one for that. Um, yeah. To, uh, cool. So yeah, we'll just literally do like final sum up and perfect. <laughs> Good timing. Okay. Um, so thank you so much. I know how much you've got. I mean, you've got three kids, so straight away you've got loads of stuff to fit in. Um, but. Clearly, you're obviously doing lots of amazing time management. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think you have to. With th- my kids are at three different schools in, in three in two different towns, so um, my school pick up is crazy at the moment. So oh, yeah, I do fun. have to just to keep the family the family ticking over and all of their clubs and activities. I have to plan my time, and that is one thing that I would highly recommend to people. Yeah, well, thank you very much for making us a priority today. It does mean so much. Like I said, big sort of fangirl moment when you came back and said, yes, yes, I can do it. And I was um, pick one for me. That was a happy moment. That was that was a good moment, good moment. And so how is best for people to to find you, to get inspired by what you're doing, to connect with you? What's your your preferred method? So really, if you go to our website, www.inspiringmummyclub.com, we have a free meditation. So I've talked quite a lot about doing three minutes just for yourself. That is available for free for you. Um, and also on the webpage, you'll be able to find a direct link to our web, our Facebook group where lots of kind of good conversations happening, um, starting to give you a free community of women that are wanting to have a better life for themselves. Um, and yeah that's it listen out for our podcast as well all of those are also on the website or you can listen to them on itunes or stitch or however you normally listen to podcasts um and yeah just um just check out that free meditation track and get using it because it can be a lifesaver amazing oh again thank you so much i will link everything down below uh, wherever you're finding this video and um yeah i'm hoping we'll get you on some future videos i definitely definitely got some topics i think you'd be amazing to hear speaking on great lovely well thank you so much for having me jessica you're very welcome we'll see you soon remember don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again